What's up, my laminated popsicles? It's SJB here, and boy, do I got a treat for you. These are voted by you guys to be the top four towers in the entirety of BTV6. All right. Now, to, obviously, can be debated, but for right now, you guys have voted for these in the Tournament of Champions. These are the four, four best towers in the game, have eliminated all of their towers in existence. So I was wondering... Can we use these four towers in a single game and actually beat a map? And if we can, how easy was it? And then how far can we go with these uh, beefy, bombastic towers here? So we're going to play in a reasonably difficult map, but not an impossible map, and just see how far we can get. So I should mention that we are playing on hard today, um, and in addition to that, we are going to use no heroes. So uh, obviously if we pick something like Etienne, we can get cam detection and popping power. If we pick just a normal hero like Pat, we can get some slowdown in the game. Uh, if we pick Geraldo, we could just kind of own everything for a long time and use all of his turrets and just get kind of crazy with it. So I decided to swap that up and say, no, I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to go kind of hard on the... Um, Dang, I don't think that helps us out at all. Uh, I wanted to go kind of hard on just these towers themselves and show off if we just build those towers that are voted to be that freaking good, can we just own everything? And honestly, I think we might be able to. Uh, these are all very, very good towers. They actually work really, I think, they're going to work really well in, a, in conjunction with each other. But the cool thing about them is none of them require each other to be all that good. Obviously, none of them can do everything. Maybe Flying Portress can do everything, but you can't get him at the beginning of the game. So getting the money going to make that happen is also a factor in getting these guys. So realistically, we really have to make these guys work as a team to make everything happen properly. Now, um, whenever you're thinking about a tower, I think that Ninja one thing Ninja Kiwi lacks is they don't think about sort of a build-up to a tower. All right, everything has to have their own use case and their own scenario in which, like, they make sense to use. But there's never, like, a, 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 a tower that you're like, ooh, I have to spend $1,000 on this to spend $1,000 on that, even though it's not that good. Spend $1,000 on this to let it build up for a little while to eventually go big. And I feel like that's one mistake in the game. I would really like to have, like, a, a, a build -up. So the best way I can explain this, all right... I'm gonna go with a Pokemon reference. Okay, so when when you're playing Pokemon Red or Blue, for example, I don't know if anybody still plays Pokemon Red or Blue. If that was way before your guys' time, I grew up on Pokemon Red and Blue and Yellow and Silver and Gold. But uh, a perfect example is, um, for example, the Druid is like a Charmander. All right, he is a solid kind of all the time. Charmander was good. He had Ember. He had uh, uh, the ability to do, I think, still tackle and stuff like that. And uh, he was just kind of an overall, like, decent tower to use. Um, as you built him up, it was like, oh, crap, Charmeleon. He's also pretty solid. Oh, dang. Now we can learn. Uh, now we can get uh, Charizard with Slash and Flamethrower. That's like the spirit of the forest. Rock solid across the board. He's just freaking amazing, right? Heck, yeah. At no point do we have to do anything bad as part of the Druid, right? We got anti-regen, we got extra popping power with Thorn Swarm, we got money-making opportunities for thirds and fourth years on top of also popping blue. So at no point was this guy a bad tower. Now, if you had to compare it to something else, maybe like uh, the opposite of that, a build-up uh, Pokemon, like either a simple version of this would be like a Caterpie, right? I mean, you like start off with a Caterpie and you're like, oh, okay, I mean, he's got tackle, I guess. Okay, string shot though. I mean, come on, man. We don't need no string shot in our life. And then Metapod, it's like, well, now he's got string shot and harden. So, okay, I guess he can slow somebody down and then harden on himself in an impossible amount. Okay, okay. That doesn't really get us anywhere, though. But then when you get a Butterfree, you're like, oh, dang. Freaking Butterfree. Confusion, bro. Oh, my God. That can hurt rock Pokemon, kill Brock, no problem. If you're willing to spend a little bit of time on your early game Caterpie, you can make some crap happen in that Mount Moon. Okay, let me tell you. But even more ridiculous than that would be a Pokemon like Magikarp. So what you can do, if you guys don't know, there's this kind of mild secret that I love playing this way. Uh, you can go for a, um, you know, let's just let's just power game mastery. Good cam detection, good popping power. I just a good combo overall here. Ooh, we got to worry about leads though. Um, we're just gonna go Hearthorns and uh, Heart of the Thunder. I think it's the answer for us. Very very good combo again. Only. We don't really have a great weakness here. Purples are probably our biggest weakness. Like, I can't pop camo purples with this guy. So, I'm gonna have to get a monkey ace. Probably by, like, mid-40s mid, mid round 40s or so. But other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how things are going. So, uh, you can buy a Magikarp in Mount Moon in the Pokemon Center by talking to the random guy in, like, the corner. 
And if you buy the Magikarp then and you start leveling him up, you can get a Gyarados by the time you're, like, fighting Lieutenant Surge. And obviously, Gyarados isn't the greatest at fighting Lieutenant Surge, but after that, he becomes absolutely dominant. He's the best freaking Pokemon in the game. All right, let me tell you. Gyarados, guys, he's the best. If you got any arguments with me, you're just wrong. Okay, now, obviously, obviously... When you finally get going a little bit deeper into, uh, you know, uh, Gen 3 and 4 and 5 and 6, okay, maybe there's some Pokemon that can compete with Gyarados, alright? They just nerfed Gyarados too hard. That's really the problem. But, uh, yeah, Gyarados, Gen 1, he's he's just, uh, he's delicious, alright? The the amount of amazingness that he can have happen is, is awesome. So, anyways, I'm getting off track here. I'm getting off track here. All I was really saying is they don't really have that many good build-up towers here in this game. There's not that many towers that are just like, okay, this sucks, sucks, sucks. But it's because you don't need time to make any of them good. And I think that's one factor that maybe Ninja Kiwi should think about, is a timed uh, tower. A tower that takes time to kind of build up and, and get better over time. I mean, there's like a couple of them that like kind of do that. Like if you get a, uh, a monkey city where you can build up dart monkeys over time. But like nobody's doing it to get the dart monkeys. Everybody's doing it to make the extra cash. So like there's not really a good version of that except for maybe... Master Builder. Alright, Master Builder does technically get stronger over time, but nobody's using it for that either. I mean, you just, you just don't do it, alright? It's kind of weird, but you just don't do it. Alright, so as far as our strategy is concerned, at this point, we are just straight up dominant. There's, like, no issues going on. And this is a, a I don't want to call it a, a tough map, but this is not an easy map. This is not Monkey Meadow. Um, this is not Park Path, dude. Uh, this is going to be a little bit difficult, though. If we cannot get this, uh, uh, Arcane Spy. Oh, I don't think we're able to afford it. Okay. All right. I have a feeling we're going to lose. What I'm going to do... I don't think this is even going to help. We're going to go for a, a quick uh, enough missed targeting, I guess. And will this be enough magically? If this guy can grab... Oh, Jungle's Bounty. We can afford that, too. Can we grab some ceramics? No. Okay, so this is a bit of a dilemma. Um, we're, we're, we're $400 off a tower that could easily, easily win, but we don't have that many options to do things at this point. So, I could build a glue gunner and make him okay against the Moab, but I don't think it's gonna help me out that much. So, I think I'm gonna try the Moki Ace one more time, but I'm gonna put him in a, uh, I'm gonna put him in a little bit earlier, but I do need to go for that cam detection. Alright, that's kind of an unfortunate thing. And then because I have the money, I'm gonna go Jungle's Bounty as well. And that's just going to be have to have to be our combo here. So let's see. This has got to do like about 100 pops or so um, to make this be good enough to, to survive here, I think. Uh, it's not at 100 pops yet. Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did we survive? We did. We survived. So guess what? This guy's going to be making us lives uh, at the end of every round. He generates one life at the end of every round, so by the time we get to the end of the game here, we're gonna basically earn our lives back. So that is actually another benefit of him. Oh my god, Chuckles Bounty just freaking ridiculous. And we can make extra cash! 320 bucks per round. Or per, uh, uh, use, actually. Okay. At this point, I think we still need to go Arcane Spike. I don't think I want to go Spectre, too expensive. I think I want to go Arcane Spike, and I think I'm gonna try to save up for Spirit of the Forest. It's only 37,800. Very, very affordable. In fact, if we could pull it off right now, I would just go straight for Spirit of the Forest, but I don't think we're going to be able to. I think the mobs are going to start to kill us more and more and more, and I, I just need an Arcade Spike. So, uh, nobody's getting more powerful. We're not, like, having a hero, like, slowly build up or anything like that. So, let's do it like this. Let's, uh, get Arcane Spike ready to go, and then, uh, oh, yeah, we're definitely going to need it. And then we are, uh, we're, we're going to ride this. We're going to ride this into the sunset. Oh, look at this domination. I mean, we've got, like, bloons and moabs and camo bloons and everything coming out right now. And, uh, <laughs> no issues at all. As soon as these moabs come out, uh, he d deletes the moabs. He deletes the bloons. And we've got a nice cleanup tower back here. He's not doing that much, though, to be honest. Uh, it's mostly still the jungle's bounty doing all the work. 35,000 pops at this point. Um, only 5k and 10k. So, uh, believe it or not, I'm a very, very happy man, but I think we're gonna go all the way up to Spirit of the Forest here, unless Realm 63 gets us. Alright, if Realm 63 gets us, I think we need to throw down a random glue gunner here, and just see if we can make it do something. But to be honest, that's not really what I want to do. Um, we gotta go for a top path glue gunner, which, to be honest, is probably... The only way that I believe that uh, the, the Caterpie uh, <laughs> metaphor we were talking about earlier might make sense. Top Path Glue doesn't really work until you get to a fifth tier. Uh, it, it's like, okay, it can like be manageable. 
Ooh, if we really needed those, Spectre. I mean, I, I don't want to. Oh my god, I haven't been using my abilities. I've been wasting all this money. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've been wasting all my money. I forgot about the ability for like a long time. I've just been chilling. So, anyways, um, yeah, let's just see if round six three is gonna go down easily or not. I suck, by the way. I, I, I totally. I'm so used to playing chips at this point that I just don't think about making extra cash. I'm just like, that's the amount of money I get, and that's the amount of money I'm gonna have. All right, uh, reinforced mobs this time around. We're five thousand dollars away from a spirit of the forest already. Round sixty-three. All right, big chunks of balloons. Yeah, this is looking pretty rough. This is looking really rough. Um, but we managed the first set. Holy crap! So I got him on first right now. I'm gonna leave him on first. If we beat the first set with him on first, I think I'd like to leave it like that. Uh, we got some ceramics getting to the back back here though. Oh, that's too many balloons. That's gonna kill us. Okay, so I might take advantage of this for later on. I don't think I want my glue to be up here, but may maybe it'll be, it'll be okay. We're gonna, we're gonna throw down a quick balloon dissolver. I don't wanna go any higher than that just yet, but I do wanna go for that bigger globs and glue splatter. Even though if I go for the fifth tier, this is the wrong cross path. You always wanna go five, zero, two in my opinion. But for now, I need the splatter. I need him to hit a bunch of random ceramics. So I'm gonna leave him on strong here. Remove him to strong. Oh my god, I don't know if that was enough. Oh, not, not even close, not even close. This is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. This is all we have to do. We're gonna have to go Spectre. Um, it was something that we, we, we thought, like, might be an issue. Um, 63 is a tough, tough, tough round, and we just don't have a good answer for it. I could, of course, build more druids to take it down. I could probably go kind of crazy with my wizards if I want to, but that's not the plan. We want to get only one of each and make them work out properly. So, r for right now, a Spectre is not a bad idea. And realistically, we have three out of the four towers up to fourth here already. We've got a uh, Jungle's Bounty, we've got our Arcane Spike, and a Spectre. All by around 65, and we are still ignoring the glue. I want to point that out. Should I just do it, just to freaking do it? No, because I don't want to put him up there. It just doesn't work right now. There's just no good way to use a Bloom Look of Fire. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to skip out on him for a little while. He's a great tower overall, but I see why people have knocked him out um, uh, and picked uh, Spirit of the Forest over the Glue Gunner. At first, I was like, no, 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 no. Maybe Glue Gunner might be better than Spirit of the Forest, but no. Now, I play too much chimps. I forget about the amount of money he can make. I forget about all the uh, lives he makes and generates and everything. Gets us back in the game here. And the total global action of Spirit of the Forest. It's kind of insane. But other which way, we're doing pretty good right now. I think we're going to easily skyrocket our way into the 70s. And I think by that point, Spirit of the Forest is going to be active. And we're going to see where this guy can take us. All right, round 75. A big round for us. Spectre's got it covered, though. Like, no issues at all so far. Um, Moab's up to Wazoo. Just does not matter. Uh, Druid here, $6,000 away from a Spirit of the Forest, and at this point, I don't see how we lose. Um, a great, great growth model just overall. I mean, everybody's kind of pulling their weight now. Uh, it was Wizard before, popping mobs and everything. Once we got Spectre, unnecessary, don't really need it anymore. Uh, and Joke's Bounty, though, I don't want to say falling off, but not being as dominant as he was before, obviously. That's because we're just about to get our fifth tier tower, and don't forget the amount of money that we had to spend on these different towers here. He is the cheapest tower so far, and was actually keeping up with <laughs> our, uh, our, our Spectre and our Wizard easily. Alright, here we go. $300 away, and we're going to have Spirit of the Forest, which is going to be an absolute, unbelievable, dominant tower to have in our game, because now he makes us money. Like, consistent, good money. It's a thousand dollars per round easy all right so no matter what it's a thousand dollars per round by the end of the game we've made twenty two thousand dollars we've paid half of the money of spirit of the forest all right or we could say we've paid for one fourth of the money for flying fortress which is really where i wanted to get to um at this point i think i want to go from a balloon solver just because i have not used him yet and i feel like i'm, I'm a bad bad person for not doing that uh, I'm gonna put him in the front. You know, I was thinking about putting him in the back, but I think just getting the damage out of the way right from the get-go is not a bad idea. So we're gonna go blue look of fire. We're gonna go for the solver. I am gonna combine him with the stronger glue at this point. And, uh, uh, see what our big issues are gonna be. Honestly, at this point, uh, I, the only thing I can see is big balloons, right? Like the, uh, reinforced Zoma gods or just chunks of Zoma gods in general will be kind of hard for us to deal with. And then, um, the bad balloon. 
So we have to decide if the Spectre is going to be maybe enough for the Bad Balloon, or if we want to just go for an Archmage before we even save up for the Flying Fortress. Kind of just go in order of cheapness. Solve our first at 22k, Archmage at 34k, and then start saving for our Flying Fortress at 82,620 bucks. Going to be insane. But will these three towers actually carry us through past round 100 at that, that point? Will they actually be that good? Uh, to be honest, I don't think they will be. So if we have to farm, we'll start farming a little bit. But at this point, I don't even want to think about it. I just want to go for it. So, uh, yeah, Loon Solver, baby. He's going to be up on round 84 already. Pretty cheap, manageable, affordable. Range pretty small, admittedly. But everything's getting popped before they even get the Solver. So we've got that going for us, I guess. <laughs> like, literally everything is just getting popped in the first, like, second of the game. I see why people love these towers. They're so good. Like, it doesn't even have to be uh, 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 fancy in any way. If it's just... If it's just good, if it's dominant, it doesn't need to be look cool looking, it doesn't need to be awesome. If it's just unbelievably powerful, people are going to pick it, right? As their favorite tower. If you like, you like something because it's good. All right, not that people like a tower because it's bad. It just doesn't usually happen. All right, here we go. Oh my God, it's coming in. Um, still not a problem. Um, I, I don't know. It just seems weird that this is not a problem, but I guess it is. All right, 20 grand saved up. Archmage is only 34. I think that's my next goal. I think because the Bad Balloon is going to be a possible issue for us, I think the Archmage might be our better bet. But to be honest, against the Bad, none of my towers are good. Even Archmage is not exactly a good Bad Popper. So, I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little scared of it. Oh, crap! DDTs! DDTs! Blow it up, Spirit of the Forest! Oh, my God! All right, so that was not good. DDTs are definitely an issue. Um, Spirit of the Forest has technically lead pop power and technically has camera detection, but it's not super duper powerful. This guy has no lead pop power at all at this point. Uh, so we need the Archmage. 100%. Didn't even think about TDTs. This is a weakness for all these towers. Glue Gunner, I should probably just give camera detection with a village, but I'm, I'm not going to, at least not yet. If it comes down to it, I will. Alright, here we go. Uh, this time around, with the Archmage combo, he's gonna decamo them, allowing the Glue Gunner to actually hit the DDTs, completely obliterating them. Alright, Archmage, another fact that we gotta think about here. That anti-camo detection. It's a thing! It's really a thing. Alright, Spirit of the Forest has generated over $20,000 at this point. <laughs> kind of absurd. We're still going higher than that. And I'm still not even using my ability well, you know what I mean? So, let's see. Round 95, though. This is a big round, clearly. Um, Spectre still sh should not be doing very much damage at all against CDTs. He's only hurting the Moabs. At this point, let's look at our pop counts. I'm actually a little curious. So Glue Gunner, 130k. For getting him this late and looking at this pop count go up that high, not bad. Uh, Spirit of the Forest, 720,000. Insanity. Archmage, he's only at 145, but he's, gr he's gaining fast at this point. We've got some big balloons here. And then uh, Spectre, only 369k. Believe it or not, Spirit of the Forest doing way, 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 way better at this point. All right. Again, if there's going to be something that kills us, it's going to be the bad. Um, I don't see even round 98 taking us down. But I will not be able to afford a Flying Fortress yet. Not yet. I can sell for it. Don't get me wrong. I could probably sell for it. But uh, it seems a little bit silly to do that. So we got round 99, though. Uh, reinforced DDTs. Gonna get taken down Archmage for the win. All right, so Spirit of the Forest, again, not doing a lot of damage against the bad. If there's one weakness, it's the bad. Glue Gunner, if there's one weakness, it's the bad blue. He does some, but minimal. Archmage, if he has got one weakness, honestly, it's the fact it's the bad blue, right? Or, or group blues, I guess. So, man, I do not know if this is going to be enough. I have a feeling we are going to lose here, but we got time on our side. Spectre can still do some damage on the, the corner there. I could blow up Spirit of the Forest uh, thingamajig. I don't even know if that's actually a good idea. Probably a bad idea, to be completely honest. I got 48 grand saved up at this point. Oh, man. So DDT is just going to wipe us out. I, I, uh, the bad balloon. So these four towers have one weakness that we really haven't talked about much. The bad balloon. It's too strong. So does that mean we lose the game? No. We're going to go like this. We're going to sell this guy. We're going to buy the Flying Fortress. We're going to rebuy our wizard. And we're going to rebuy the Archmage here. And we're going to just see how far can we go. We're going to still be making money here. Don't get me wrong. But uh, uh, we do have to watch out because DDTs at this point will be an issue uh, uh, if Flying Fortress can't handle them. 
So I believe he can, for the most part, pop most DDTs. But uh, I do. I want more, and I want to be able to decamo so we can let the, the solver and everybody do more damage here. Oh my god, Flying Fortress of Doom. So don't forget that we're actually wasting a lot of popping power here by not getting the top path. We went for the uh, spy plane because we did not want to build a village or get Etienne for cam detection. So that is just something to keep in mind here. There we go. We got a fourth tier wizard at this point. Now the question is, how far can we go? How deep can we go in this game? Is this really going to be that powerful of a late game combo as it was for just kind of a rocking almost everything combo? Uh, I have a feeling yes. I have a feeling we're going to go pretty far. I don't know what far is. 120? 125? Um, we'll have to wait and see because... Woo! DDTs! Maybe it's 106! 106! That's it? What? Okay, hold the phone. We're going to have to do it like this. We're going to have to get rid of the balloon solver. We're going to have to buy the Arc Mage. We're going to rebuy the glue gunner. And we're going to see if we get the glue gun. I sounded like, uh, what's his face? Stab you in the face with a soldering iron guy. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see if this is going to be a big difference here, though. Oh, seemingly, yes. Absolutely. Uh, significantly, significantly better. Oh, my God. Easily owned around 106 this time. I still want to build up that balloon solver, but uh, it's going to take a little while to make that happen. So let's see if we can make it around 120. Or maybe further. Or maybe not. All right, we already got money for Solver on round 111. I still think that putting him in the front is probably the better bet for us than putting him in the back. Um, at least for now. I mean, once we get to uh, 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 a bunch of mobs kind of like getting to the back back here, maybe it'll be different, but I don't know, dude. Reinforced DDTs at this point. I want the glue to get on these guys so they can be gluing for as long as possible. It's not going to do an insane amount of damage, but it is going to do some damage over time. All right. Um, feels good, but I definitely feel the fall off here. Everybody's starting to get uh, get to the struggle. Let's look at the total pop count at this point. Now, keep in mind, I had to sell the solver, I had to sell the Archmage, so their their pop counts are not accurate. But Flying Fortress has got three million. Spirit of the Forest has got two million for the price. I mean, uh, kind of insane that Spirit of the Forest has been able to keep up at all. I, I, I got to admit that, right? For like half the price. And for making us his money back by this point. Nearly. He's only, um... Maybe like, what, three, four thousand dollars off from paying for himself in its entirety? No other tower does, dude. No other tower does that. Around 115. DDT is getting far, but we're still surviving. Still making more money. Still popping some balloons. Still popping some balloons. All right. Oh, blow it up. Blow it all up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Now we got nothing for 117. All right. Flying Fortress. Perfectly played. Oh, this is going to be the end, though. It's got to be the end. Or could it? Yeah, there it is. Too many DTs for 117. Flying Fortress is our best popper here as a 025. Um, to be honest, some people want me to go a little bit further than this, but I, I think I'm happy with what we did today. I think I'm very happy with these guys overall. Uh, doing a little bit of selling and, and, and weird stuff to make us survive a little longer was kind of fun. But it does show you that doing um, a jump hop and a skip to get to the right tower is actually a very reasonable and manageable thing to do. Selling at things for a big boy is totally worth it. Um, in a lot of situations. I know that somebody was saying that they really, really like the strategy of just selling everything for a, a, a super mines. And I, I, I've never done it before. But to be honest, it sounds like a really fun idea. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, make that happen at some point. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed, press that like button, subscribe, and of course, have a super duper delicious day.